Hello and welcome to CPL Fever. It's your host, Jack Najimari here. And today on another episode of Soccer Stories, Get Into The Journey, we are joined by former Halifax Wanderers player and current York United fullback. Some like to call him the wall, Chris Novick Ensa. We're super excited to interview you because we're really excited to get your story because your story has been one that has been very interesting and we've watched it um through the through the cpl so thanks you everyone to having me here uh, it's a pleasure to be here in the show so uh yeah i'm ready to answer all of your question so okay. okay so our first question that we have for you is when did you start playing soccer and how did you fall in love with the beautiful game uh you know like everybody i started playing at the young age you know probably like five six years old just for fun like in front of my house with my friends and just enjoy the game like that for fun and after i started playing with my first team it was at uh, eight years old it was a club the Bucanier club in uh, montreal so when i stopped playing there i started playing there you know my dad was there my family was there and like everybody was supporting me and like I see everyone that was watching, you know, were happy. So it made me happy straight to play this game. And, you know, straight from the beginning, I start playing soccer and I love it, you know. And so since now, I still love it. Awesome. Yeah, it's hard not to uh, not to fall in love with it. So how did you, um, when, when did you realize you were uh, good at soccer? Were you good at, at like eight in your first team? You're just like, you just knew you, you had had talent? Uh, I was, I was okay when I stopped playing, you know, when I was, I was, I was better when I was playing at school, when we were playing, like, I remember we have two classes, one against each other's, and all the time we were like fighting during games, so I remember I was not that bad at this time, but when I really realized that I was like, okay, I'm not, I'm decent in soccer, you know, it was really more around, around the age of like 13, 14 years old, when uh, I okay. make to the, the first triple A team. So that was at the point I was like, okay, it's not, I'm not too bad. But before that, I was just playing for fun, enjoying it. But I saw, I, I saw like a lot of good players. Like, so I was like, no, nah, I'm not to this level yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what was it like winning the Canadian Championship um, when you were an under-14 AAA? That was one of the, still one of the best moments. You know, you don't win trophy that much when you get pro. So all the trophy that you win before, you still think about it. But that one was was unbelievable. We were like one of the best teams. No, we were the best team in Canada with a lot of good players that are still playing pro also right now. So, you know, the fact that we start together and we win this tournament and after that, we were just, it was like the first big tournament that we all did, you know. Mm-hmm. So to see ourselves at the top level at our age, we were like, okay, we all, all of these players now, if we keep working out, we have a lot of chance to make it uh, in soccer. So, so it was good. So you said you were, so you're 13, you know, um, you you win, you win the championship, you realize you're good at that. At what point did you start saying, okay, well, I'm going to start working on some of these different elements of my game. I'm going to work maybe on my weak foot. I'm going to work on whatever it is like outside of practice. Yeah, I think me, I'm really the the fact that I'm still playing soccer right now because I'm a hard worker. So at the young age, I was just good defensively. So I was able to make tackles, run everywhere. But with the ball on my in my on my foot, it was bad, you know, make passes, dribble, everything was really, really bad. So I start do extra work like by myself after training, before training, every day I was doing like maybe three times by day I was working by myself just to make sure to get the, the level. And I can see the difference now because when I see the players that I was playing before, they was always making me fun, make fun of me because I like had a bad touch and I knew it, you know, but now they see it and they're like, damn, it's different. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, so you're extremely driven. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell me about your brother, Felix, like how, how much of an advantage was it, was it to have him? I'm sure you guys went one on one all the time, tried to nutmeg each other. Uh-huh. Yeah, it was uh, it was kind of fun because most of the time we always played together when we played like everywhere, us against the others, and we like always protect each other because we're brothers. So we make sure no one touches brother and vice versa. So like 
all the time we used to train together, we hard work the other because we always want one of the each other going to finish to get mad because we give everything when we train even it's for fun always finish with a small fight but after it take five minutes and it's gone we get over <laughs> it but i think it's really good to have someone that's playing also and love the same sport as you yeah how did your parents um how did your parents develop you so that you and your brother had that had that drive right because i would say that one of the reasons that you that, that, that you're successful um, based on what you've said is because you have that extra drive. You put in the extra work that maybe players that were 13, 14, maybe had a better touch on the ball. You've surpassed them in your, in your skill. I think my, because my dad also used to play. So mm. he had a small base of soccer, you know, he knew a couple things. So when he watched me play, it was after the game, he was always screaming on the side. Like everybody know him for the guy that's screaming on the side. So, like, after the game, he was always like, okay, you need to do this, do this, do this. And, you know, I was like, I'm like, okay, I understand what you said, but I was still getting mad inside of me because if everybody don't like when people always trying to, like, oh, do this, like, talk to you and fix you. So I was like, you know what, I will do it by myself and try to fix it by myself. So after that, he's not going to come at me and always saying, like, okay, that was bad, that was bad. Because, you know, sometimes you have a bad game and when people go at you and, keep pushing and like putting yourself down is, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. Yeah. Parents are like that when they, when they watch the game, they try to say, you yeah, <laughs> but I understand it. I understand it. I'm sure I would be like that with my kids too. Yeah. And, and I think the fans are like that too. They're like, Oh, yeah, I also. should have done this, should have made that decision, but you know, um, <laughs> that easy. And speaking of that, what do you think was one thing that your father might have said to you that really helped you, um, your development in the long term? I think uh, that really helped me is just because, you know, he was always behind me, following me, just because he loved to see his child play the sport that he used to play, you know. But mm -hmm. it's just like one day he told me, like, like, I remember he saw me, I was uh, on TV because I was talking about, like, I did a soccer camp and it was he saw me on TV and after he called me, he was like, you know, you can really make it. Like you can do something in your life with that sport. I was didn't I didn't have this in mind at this age. I was just like, yeah, maybe why not? Like all the kids dreaming about it. He said, No, seriously, if you keep doing that, working hard, he knew I was not good, like with the ball on my feet. So he tell me, like, if I keep doing this and you fix this, I'm pretty sure you will like have the chance to play pro in mm -hmm. your life. So I put this in my mind. I have a good mindset. I work on it, and uh, it's not a bad start. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. So where did where did he play? Where did, just in, in Montreal? Like my, my dad is just playing in Congo. Okay, in my country. Yeah. Um, and our next question for you is about um some of your past calls before that. So, uh, what was the environment of the in the Montreal Impact Academy, now Club de Foot Montreal. The Club de Foot. <laughs> uh, it was good. No, I really like it. I really enjoyed it over there. I found a lot of good good friends that become brother. So, like, uh, there was a good level. Over there, everything is, like, really strict. So, mm -hmm. you know, don't be late in training. Shake hands of the coach. Like, be serious. Dress well. Be done on time. So, I think it really helped me to grow up as a, as a man that you know, I had someone that's taking care of me instead of my parents, but like, you know, the coach was always watching us, tell us, oh, eat better or do things like that. And you know, all the small things like that make us be uh, like old men, like I can say, like at the young age. Okay. So it was, so the environment was like really good and they'd give you all these little tips that really, that really helped you in your development. Yeah, exactly. So how did you get, how did you hear about the, uh, the CPL? Uh, it was my second year with, because I only did two years with uh, Montreal Impact at this time. And after that, you know, we are, they used to have a second team, but they closed it. So after that, I was looking for something else to do, maybe find some trout and everything. And we heard like the last two games of the season, we heard about a Canadian league that was starting, but it was really like, nothing specific it was just oh this may be going to be a Canadian team and after uh York United uh, York Nine at this time invited me for like a, a game to scout players 
So I was like, okay. So I went there. I played. It was an 11 v 11 game. Uh, was good, fun. There was Jimmy Renan, the coach at this time. And he tell me like, oh, I got the level to play in this league and blah, 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 blah. So I heard of it. And after, that was the first time I heard about the league. Okay. It was uh, in the summer. But after that, I didn't hear nothing about it until that I signed in like January. Okay. Yeah. And how did Stephen Hart get in contact with you? Uh, like I said, it was Jimmy Brendan, the coach from York United, that wanted me to sign with uh, York United at the beginning, uh -huh. uh, York Nine at the beginnings. And after I thought, I think he spoke with Stephen Hart. I don't know how they fixed it, how it worked. But finally, I just had uh, my agent that called me and say, Oh, Halifax won you. I was like, oh, Okay, good. What's the project and everything? And after that, I got in touch with Stephen Hart and they talk about the projects and everything they have for me over there. And it was, everything was good. I was interested to go there and see it, a new city and everything. So it was really fun and I enjoyed it. Cool. Yeah. So how did you like playing for the, uh, for the Wanderers? Wow, Wanderers was, uh, was a lot of fun. Eh? It was uh, good, it was good. It was family over there. I met, I met a, good, uh, a lot of good players. Uh, the coach was good. We had a good team, a better team second years than first year. Uh, I learned a lot about uh, be a pro, be as a pro. So, I, you know, we always remember where, where we start. So that's something I'm never going to forget for sure. But, uh, yeah, you know, we always miss to play at the one rest ground and be home because uh, when you're away there, you see, you feel the pressure, but <laughs> home, the, vibe, the vibe was better. Yeah. Yeah. It was an amazing atmosphere because uh, I was a ball boy um, for the inaugural season. So mm -hmm. it was a really cool atmosphere to hear, hear all the chants cheering, the blue smoke. The kitchen was especially yeah. exciting. <laughs> no, it was perfect. And I, and I have another question for you about Stephen Hart because he's a great coach. And a lot of people that we've talked to have really liked him. But you really thrived under um, him. So what do you think... Um, what was what was so special about him that um, allowed you to reach great heights? Uh, I think he had a good approach with players. You know, he's not the kind of coach that's going to scream. I don't think he screamed that much. When you have something to say to the team, he will. You know, he will get to know everybody and like scream if you need to. But I think the way he talked to people and explained some detail, uh, details mm -hmm. of like things, I know it, Grab me a couple of times and tell me I need to do this, more do this. And he was keep doing me, keeps talking to me about it. And the good way, you know, there's a way that how people to learn and how people to like want more. And I think the way he was telling me those things, it make me think like, okay, I need to do it. And like, you know, it really helped me because I keep focusing on getting better on this aspect and it it worked pretty sure. So what's one of the areas that that he he uh, helped you improve in? Uh, this kind, there's a lot. He was telling me a lot to before to receive the ball, mm -hmm. make sure that I know where I need to, where is my next step, you know. And it was something that was taking a lot, a lot to learn because I was taking touch and driving, and after looking for uh, for someone to pass the ball. But right. the way he always remind me to do it. If, at one point, I was like, okay, I already look, I got the ball coming. Okay, I know I'm going there. You know, this one of this aspect that really helped me and also defensively really helped me to stay on my foot because I remember I was, when I started, I really always want to tackle on the grass field. It was always <laughs> better, but, you know, he tell me in high level, good striker will, like, have me easy, you know, because if I go to the ground too easy, it's easy to make a chop and uh, score after. So make me stay on my feet it was making sure that, okay, stand on your foot, stand on your foot. Don't tackle, don't tackle. And I was keep staying on my foot. And at one point, it worked and it make me a stronger defender. Mm -hmm. And that must be tough because every time you make a good tackle at the Wanderers grounds, you get all yeah, those Yeah, exactly. Like, you wanted to make the tackle. <laughs> You're like, oh, oh, I'll just steal it. Like, nah, <laughs> wait, I can run it easily. Yeah, cool. Uh, and if I want to talk a bit more about the Island games, like in particular with your time with the waters, because it was a crazy um, time, but what was one memorable moment from the Island games? 
Uh, there was a lot, you know, this, <laughs> we live a lot of things over there this summer, a lot of good things and bad things. But uh, I remember on the field, it was the goal for Omar Cream. I still remember that one when we, uh, sorry. No problem. Yes, yes. When the game finished 1-1 uh, against York 9. So like the way we were all like, we had a red card, but we're still working like crazy. Oh. Yeah, all the game we were running. Uh, didn't let me say this guy. Don't come. Uh, we were working like crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, working, working, and finally we finally score a goal on the on a free kick. I win the fall. We had the uh, free kick. We we won that. Like, uh, we score on that one. If the one one I had and because of that we make the playoff and because of that we went to the final. Exactly. And, yeah. yeah. Good. So it was it was perfect. It was yes. Yeah, that was a crazy game. I remember watching that. And that game was really tense because it we like you said, we were you were the Wanderers were down a red card, but you guys were still playing well, working hard, pushing for the equalizer. And then, like, I feel like in the 90th minute or something, or, like, yeah. really, really late on, you yeah, it was off that free kick. Um, and, yeah, that was a crazy game. And then Jimmy Brennan, like, flips his, his board. and Yeah, yeah. You can't feel <laughs> he was not much. happy about that. <laughs> yeah, he was not. I understand him. <laughs> yeah. Like, so I you have a lot funny. of history. Yeah, so you have a lot of history with – um uh york united the wanderers like a lot of a lot of games you two were like in the last season kind of neck and neck um for, for yeah. a lot of the season and you, you almost i guess you almost signed with with york nine um before you signed with the wanderers so how did you get wooed back to um the uh, york united uh, I think, uh, you know, like after I finished my two years with Halifax, I was, I had nothing to say about the city. Everything was perfect. I had a good player, good teammate, good coach. And it's just, you know, at one point, you always want to try something new. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to try uh, other things, uh, new things. And I know they had option, but uh, you call me and like, you know, the project that they gave and they talked to me and they said it was really good. Everything was a good thing. Was Toronto close close to my hometown, Montreal? Uh, my brother was in the plan, so you know it was a, a lot of good things. So make me think a lot about like, okay, what should I do? And at the end, I make a good decision, and I came here, and you know, we having fun here also. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So in when you when you were at, at York United, and um, there was or as you are there, but initially, you know, you, you, there was a lot of versatility, right? They had some injuries. You had to play some, some different positions. Um, tell me about that. Was that easy for you to, to adjust? Uh, yeah, it was something I used to do also in uh, Halifax, like more the first year I played kind of every position, mm -hmm. uh, no striker, but and keeper, but the rest everywhere. But, you know, so it was something normal that I need to go fix, uh, uh, the the spot that uh, this player are injured, so it was you know I will do it I will do it for my team all the time every day, so it was something good and uh, if I had to do it I will do it again for sure. So what makes you such a versatile player? You know because when we heard earlier in your in your career right um, you were good at defense right a lot of players that we've interviewed um, they maybe start as an attacker and then they they maybe move back into the midfield or, or back into, into defense, but you started as a defender and then got your skills better. And then, you know, you, you have this versatility. So how did you develop that, that, uh, that versatility? Cause obviously, you know, there's other players that could say, Oh, you go play there, but it tends to be like, if they need someone in a different position, they know that, that they can trust you like anywhere on the field. Yeah, I think it's because, you know, I was playing, I play a lot everywhere. So I play with my team when I was young and I also play at the park and with friends all the time. And when I'm playing there, I don't play the same way that I'm playing with my team. Like when I play, I used to play, I still play sometimes at the park. I play a lot more like a winger or like attacker. So I had a, and midfielder, I had a lot of joy to offensively. 
you know. So I did a lot of work like that over there. So that make me able to be able to play like more an offensive role. But so like I'm good defensively. So for the rest, I can defense this all back the back four. And if something need to go higher, I have a lot of athleticisms. Like uh, I think people saw it. So I can run and do the work on top also for, for the rest of the guys. So I think that must be the reason why I'm able to play kind of everywhere. Yeah. And versatility is such a strong, um, a strong skill to have, especially since, like you said, if there are injuries, you can um, go to a different position. But also because I find, because I've also moved around into a couple of positions, that if you um, if you play winger and then you go to center mid, you're going to know what the winger needs because you've played that mm-hmm. position so much. Yeah, yeah that's true. Mm-hmm. And a lot of exciting things are happening with York United right now also because a new manager also just came in, Martin Nash. So you you haven't been able to like play under him for that long, but it's been a little while now. Uh, so what do you, what's your um, favorite thing about Martin Nash and what, um, what were your first impressions of him when he came into the role as Gaffer? Hmm. Uh, I can't see, uh, he's, a, he's really a good guy. Like I can say, like uh, we can see that he knows his football. He know what he's doing. He have uh, he had something in his mind and I know he's getting the time that he need because we, are, we got a lot of time to show us like the project he had for us, the way we're going to play and all this thing. And I see like also he's a really funny guy. You always see, a, sometimes you can see a serious face, but for the rest of the time, he enjoy, he enjoy his job. You can see it. He makes some joke. You can see he's laughing. Uh, he's having fun to watch us play. So I think uh, so far is uh, everything's good, and I I want to see how uh, I want to see him on the on the side doing a game to see how he react because you know all the coaches are different, but everything is good so far, and I, and, I, and I like him as a coach. Yeah. That's good. Um, and you said a little bit about how every coach is different, but uh, just a little more about Nash. How is he different than Jimmy and Hardy? And Hardy? And Hardy. Okay. (laughs) Stephen (laughs) Hardy. Okay. Uh, Damn. That's uh, uh, for sure. They're all different, but I need to know more about uh, Coach Nash to to, answer of it. But uh, so far I can see... He's more the kind of guy to, I, I feel like he's, he's watching a lot of things mm-hmm. and he's going to talk later, you know, he's taking note of everything and fix it. Well, you know, there's some coach that's going to like love to stop everything, stop all the time, fix the things, stop, fix the things. I think Stephen R was like that also more. What I think with Martin, Martin is more like he's taking note of the thing. You see the weakness, the problem with it. And after he's going to talk to us and trying to fix it, but we'll see if it's still going to be like that during the preseason and the rest. But so far, it is like Okay, cool. All right, so I wanted to ask you about playing fullback, right? So fullback is, is a position that you've played uh, a lot. You get to do some slide tackles. You know, you can be a little bit more aggressive on the side. But I would say that the fullback has to be the most fit athlete on the team because you need to run all the way up. You make the run. And then that that forward does a bad touch, and then you got to go all the way back, you know. So how do you um, how do you stay fit? And, uh, and, and stay would you agree? And would you agree that that the fullback needs to be one of the? Uh, yeah, players? yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm very sure I need to because uh, you can see the stats after every game. The players that run the more the more, sometimes some winger and midfielder, but foot, there's always going to be footback on it. The footback will be on this this guy, and uh, for me, I think uh, all my uh, all my life I need to run for everything I was doing in life. So to go to training, I remember when I was young, I used to run all the time to go to home, go to school, go everywhere. I always run, uh, and I always find a, wa- a way to go like by myself, bicycle, run, or all this thing. So I think I don't know why, but I really think it's that I like that that I got a good uh, car too. So I start uh, running everywhere, and now I need to keep my fitness. So I always do 
couple runs, work uh, on the, the fitness to make sure I will keep it high because I know during game I need to run uh, forward and back uh, all the game. So. <laughs> yeah. So what's the most important characteristic of a, of a fullback? Um, if you were picking a team and looking for a fullback, what would you say is most important? Uh, I think uh, aggressive, aggressive, I would say that. Aggressive? Like, uh, yeah, 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 more like that. Because I think defensively, you need it. And also offensively, like someone that will go, go run a lot, aggressive, and have a good quality of crosses. And I think as a footback, you do a lot for the others, you know. You mm. defend to cover your center back, to cover your midfielder. And attack, you give assists to the striker, to the rest. So it's really a work to help the team. So you do, if you're a generous player, so I think it would be a good position to you to give for the others. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, you are an amazing pullback uh, who is fantastic on both sides of the ball. You're able to run back and forth like we've been talking about. Uh, great touch. Um, but do you... Do you try and emulate a full? Do you try and emulate someone in the in your game, or is there a fullback that you really admire? Mm, there's for real. There's a lot because I watch a, a lot of different kind of fullback because you know, I think the better way is to grab a lot from different and put mm-hmm. it all together. But you know, there's a lot of fun like Alfonso Davies that I love that I like. There's a uh, Juan Bissac also is a lot of defensive work and I really love from him. Uh, there's some good crosses like Chant that everybody can see it all the time. You know, there's a lot of things from different football that I watch a lot and trying to mix it all together. Yeah, did you, when did you start watching soccer or did you always watch soccer because your your dad watched it? I looked, I used to not watch soccer that much for real. I was watching just a bit, you know, the big games and, uh, you know, the important games, Champions League and all the rest, World Cup. But I think when I went in Alphax and I was home and I have a lot of time home, a lot of free time, I started watching a lot more of soccer, uh, mm-hmm. football games. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think that was at this moment. And when you watch a lot, you learn more. And, you know, that's something probably I should do earlier, but mm-hmm. I still... Yeah still doing right now <laughs> well, when you're ready right yeah because soccer yeah, exactly. soccer is such a weird thing like if 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 when people who haven't played it or like they just have to watch it they're like what's going on like it's just yeah like, like a new person to soccer they're like there's nothing happening there's no score <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> so boring and then you get into it and you're like wow like everything is so is so detailed and yeah. interesting but yeah, yeah, the more you get into it, the more you know it's like the little subtle tactics, the slight shift in formation, um, all the one twos and stuff like that. It's like it has so many different layers to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what's your favorite formation to to play? Like, let's and and your favorite position on the field. Uh, my favorite formation will be four three three. I think so. Okay. okay. Like I think this formation to have a winger that's taking a lot of the one v one things, uh, players in on top, two sixes or one, depend the way you play. But you know, have some player that's working hard in the middle. And I think that was the best one. And the which one I like to play. I think high level as a footback. I see, I see more myself as a footback. But when I used to play before and I. You know, play uh, with friends, and I like to play in the midfield because I have more time, more chance to have the ball and enjoy it. But yeah. uh, it's it's different when you play at the park and with a real team. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. And what is your favorite tactic to play in? Uh, is there a specific kind of style of play that you just love to play in? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I just like. When I play, I like the the ball movement. So mm-hmm. that's something I would say. Like I like when play play easy, simple, and when the time is it, the good time, take a touch, take a play one v one, and do the magic, you know. But yeah, I love the way Barcelona used to play before. Yeah, uh, you know we all love that one. 
Yeah, I love, um, I actually, have, what, you mentioned Barcelona, but I also love like the Spanish national team from 2008 to 2012. I still love them, but like from 2008 to 2012, they were really unstoppable. They won like the Euro world and Euro, I think. Um, but Euro. I think they won the Euro cup, then they won the world cup and then they won the Euro cup again, but they had Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, like at the heart of it. Now there are great players all around the field, but I feel, I feel like those were like the really like the most important pieces and they all play for Barcelona, but they were so amazing at Tiki Taka. And I'm actually a huge fan of Xavi, especially now that he's now coaching Barcelona. I'm definitely excited to see what more of what he can do as the manager. Yeah, for sure. So tell us about your mindset. You know, how do you, um, as a professional, like obviously you mentioned mindset a little bit earlier. Um, how do you get in the right mindset? Obviously, there's times when coaches will pick someone else for the game um, or something. But how do you keep your mindset up as a, as a pro? I think uh, my mindset, I always keep uh, good energy. I try to always stay positive and because I know everything happened for a reason in life, you know. So if one day you're not on the starting or one day you're on the bench, I always take it like, okay, perfect. So that means... I was not ready for that game, you know, so it's only, it's everything about me. So it's not like, oh, I have a coach to make me play this, that. I always think about, okay, it's me. Let's, I need to do something to fix that. So I work on the things that I need to get better on it and always, I, read, I take everything like, as a motivation. So make sure to fix all those things and get better every day. So, and I, I really like, because I'm really close to God. So all the time I have something in my head, I always pray and make sure to find a way to get it, to fix that thing. And I think it really helped me to stay strong and face all the different situations that I see in my life. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that sounds, that sounds amazing. So, and, um, oh, you can go. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so you played almost every game for York United. Um, so obviously you're a really important, important part of, of that team. Um, you know, what are you looking forward to in the, in the next season? Can you repeat the end? Of- yeah. What are you, what are you looking forward to in the next season? Uh, I think, you know, I think this year we really want to win the championship and that's something we're going to work on it. And I really like, I like, I, like you said last year, I played a lot of game like I want this year the same. You know, I want to play every if it's every game, every minutes, and my body's good with it. <laughs> I wish uh, I wish I'm able to do it, but I really want to help my team to get the their first championship for this for York United. So I will do everything my possible for me to to help them. Yeah, that sounds good. And York and I are looking really strong in the preseason. Um, some great returnees like you, um, a bunch of other players, but also some really new and exciting additions and definitely look with lots of you guys keep getting better each season, um, going to third and the next spot is like first or second. (laughs) And a question I had for you um, on the topic of mindset is, can you take us into your, into the mindset of Chris and Vic Ensa and tell us like about your daily routine? My mind, uh, my mind is really always funny things, so it's not too serious at that point. But you know, I woke up in the morning during training. We always eat a small breakfast that uh, because I live with two of my teammates right now, mm-hmm. and we're really close, so we most of the time we cook for each other. So the first guy that's wake up is gonna make something, and for the rest, and we all take it. We go to training. And I always trying, I think like the vibe is really important. So if you have good vibe straight from the morning, from the day, I think things go well with it. So good vibe, good day. So like, you know, after we have a good training, I really like to listen music. So I always uh, listen to some music in the car, in the, in the dressing room, dance with the players all the time and sing. When we get home, most of the time during the day, we watch soccer games. Uh, you take care of your body. If you need to do stretch or ice bath, do it. 
most of the time I'm the I'm the cooker in the house, and so I always need to be there. So they're gonna make me like, oh, what are we eating tonight? <laughs> Take a to the grocery, you know, grab the things, cook for everybody, and you know, like we like I said, we're really close, so we watch movie together. Or sometimes we go here in downtown Toronto, a good place. So there's a lot of beautiful place to to see. So we visit there a lot, and yeah, we having fun to uh, fun to know each other a lot more and know the city too. Yeah, that sounds great. So what do you, what's, uh, what's something that, that you like to cook? Uh, I'm a, a really a pasta guy. So my, my friends know it about it. So I make all different kinds of pasta that you can think about it. And uh, also I like, I like African food. So my mom teach me a couple one to do. So I try oh, to cool. follow the recipe that she gave me. And I think now I know it more, but uh, I do it by myself trying to find a way to do it by myself and uh, cook for my guys but so far it's good then they're still in life and they're still playing good so that means they're eating good okay yeah and what's your favorite african dish what uh your favorite african dish uh i think uh, i like a lot i don't know if you guys know all of it but uh i really like fufu Okay. okay. That uh, with meat, uh, with uh, chicken or other meat, and uh, eat that with madesu. That's a good sauce that I mix with it. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So um, yeah. So uh, I guess what we were gonna say is. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So you were uh, nominated as like under under twenty one player of the year. Um, you know, you're, you're obviously one of the players that is really important to the teams that you're on. Um, what is that, what is that like? And what is, what is your aspiration for, uh, for this, this season? Mm. Uh, like I said, I always want more. So if I'd, I was nominated two years ago, now two years after, Maybe I want to win it. You know, I want to win it because it was under 21. I always had a big motivation and to be the greatest. So if I want to win the MVP of the league, yes, I'll go off with it and do everything that I need for that. But first of all, I really want to like have my team to make it, make it to the final and win the, the league this year. You know, So I will do my, my job and help the others if someone has problems and everything. And help them to to make it to the the, the 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 final this year, and we have a lot of new players. And I know the best way for players because I, I did the move to I came to I was to Halifax to York. So when you're a new player somewhere, it's always hard to like uh, be comfortable in the new team. So all the new players that they always have time to talk with them, chill with them, make it them feel comfortable, make them feel home, and be good. So when they play on the field, they have confidence. And they play like they were home since uh, 20 years ago. So I'll, we always do my best to make them feel comfortable and make the team uh, win the, the championship. Yeah, and that's yeah, also that's really awesome. important because a player that has like a great mindset and try and like um, is really motivational or even just makes new players or any players feel really good about themselves. They'll feel better. They'll perform better. And like you said, confidence, because confidence is a huge part of playing soccer because um, soccer IQ is really important. But even if you know like a good, a, like a good pass, but you don't have the confidence to make it, even though you know you can do it, but it's like mm -hmm. maybe a, hard to do, but you know you can do it. If you don't have the confidence, you're not going to do that. And if it's like a really good pass, then it could end up um, with like a, creating a play or a goal or whatever yeah. it could be. Yeah. Um, and in your own soccer journey, do you feel like there have any there have been any tips um, that have helped you overcome any obstacles or adversities? Uh, any tips? I think uh, the way you're eating it's something that you maybe think. This is not that important, but you will feel it day after day if you eat bad, you start feeling on the field and your body will feel more sore and for the injury, everything, you know, 
as even if it's small, everything has a point in your body. So you really need to take care of it. Uh, take care of your body, the time for rest, when it comes to rest, do it. And also, you know, it's always better to find a way to help yourself. So it's just go to the gym sometime during your off days or, you know, take care of your body, go to do some uh, yoga and things like that. Uh, other sport, enough time with girlfriend, family. You know, you always go to have the good mindset to be focused on football. And after that, have another time to do the things uh, about life with your family and uh, friends. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you do yoga? Uh, sometimes I try. Like, okay. I, I got the friends that sometimes tell me to come in classes or I watch video YouTube on, on it and try it sometimes. At first time, I was like, why why I should do that? When I start doing it, I was I feel like it really helps. So, yeah. It's, it's something... Do you eat do you eat light before a game? Yes, well, yeah, really. Okay. What's your typical meal that you eat before a game? Most of the time we're gonna sometimes we eat with the team, mm -hmm. but uh, the rest of the time I always eat a, a bit of pasta, not too much of meat. I always take a small part and uh, the basic sauce on my pasta, but you know, I try to put no much, not not too much of spice on it go the basic one just to have something in my stomach but i don't want to i don't like to fill my body my my stomach during the game so i always eat like yeah like, like, yeah yeah okay. me too um but you mentioned how you uh follow like how you mentioned diet so do you follow a specific diet or do you try and eat like um really healthy yeah i don't follow any diet yet but i trying to eat LT and uh, I saw players doing things, talk with them. I get information about what things good, what things better. I'm not trying to make myself uh, follow a better diet. Okay. All right, so if there's a player right now watching that's maybe like 13, 14 years old, wants to go pro like like you, what advice would you, would you give them? I'll tell them that uh, event, just everything is possible. If you want something, you can get it. The only thing is you need to do your part of the job. You don't need to think about the others and say like, oh, I want to do like him. I want, no, do like you. Do like what you want. If you want to do it, do it, you know? So it's really something I want to tell them because we know that we are in a generation with the web, uh, social media and uh, the other, the things about the other people that say really affect players and affect people and like, you know, so I think it's real generation that we need sometimes to be outside of it and do the thing for them. You know, most of the time we do something like, oh, let's post it and see how people feel about it. Or I'm working hard. Or, you know, if you want to do something, it's better if the young player do it for you. You don't need to tell to everybody, do your thing, work on it. And it's always better to show the price at the end that you make it. People are like, how oh, this guy make it? Because you work every day and keep doing your things even if it's not in front of everybody even if you don't talk about it all the time you keep doing your work and that's the important mm, yeah great nice advice. that's great advice chris chris yeah. no chris no chris no <laughs> and i think that's a good question to wrap up the the question part of the interview so now um we're gonna go into the rapid fire questions which is less about soccer um, and just kind of, this is a little more light and um, getting to know you as a person better. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the first one is, do you play FIFA? Uh, for fun, yes. Uh, Xbox or PS4? PS4. Okay. PS4. Um, uh, favorite fruit? Favorite what? Fruit? fruit. Yeah, fruit. Watermelon, watermelon. Watermelon? Okay. Okay. Cool. All day. All day. <laughs> nice. Uh, where is your happy place? Uh, happy place, soccer field. I will say this for sure. Yes. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite genre of music? Genre of music, uh, Afrobeat. Yeah, Afrobeat. Let's say Afrobeat. Okay. Um, what? Uh, who is your inspiration and why? 
Uh, inspiration. Man, that's a tough question. Eh? Uh, I don't know, for real. There's so much different kind of inspiration. Football, life, family, you know. So, you know, there's my mom. That's always a big inspiration for me. Mm-hmm. There's a football player like uh, Ronaldo that the same thing for me because you see the way you work hard. So I would say a mix of all of my family, my mom, Ronaldo, and like a lot of players that I see fighting for to make it. I think yeah, we'll mix all of them. Okay. okay. Nice. Um, what is one superpower that you would like to have? One to what? Uh, what is one superpower that you would like to have? Ooh. Oh, whoa, 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 super power. Uh, uh, invisible? Invisible? Invisibility? Yeah, I like nice. that one. Yeah. Cool. Why not? Um, is, do you have a quote that you live by? Mm. <laughs> or that you really like? A quote like a, like yeah. a quote that, yeah, like that a you little, put on Instagram, right? Y- yeah, or something. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Uh, but uh, probably in French, some of it in French, but uh, yeah, in English. Yeah, right. uh, yeah, let's hear it in French. No, but I need to think about it. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't have like a, uh, I just, oh yeah, if I say one, I really have the the one that I used to have on, I think it's still my photo on Facebook since 10 years. It's, it was uh, pray, wait, trust. Okay. Okay. Nice. I like that. Um, what's your favorite TV show? Uh, let's say Casa de Papel. Okay. Uh, favorite book? Maniac. Favorite book? Yeah. Whoa. I don't read book, but uh, Pele, Pele, Pele. Okay. Uh, favorite um, movie? Movie, movie, uh, street dance. Let's say that. Okay. Um, you sorry. No, I say street dance. Yeah, I oh, just. Okay. Uh, favorite animal. Lopa. Ah damn! <laughs> I just know the French. Lopa is like the the faster one. Yeah, leopard. 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 Yeah, leopard. leopard. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Yeah, um, favorite board game. Board game ping pong. Okay. Ping pong is a board game. Uh yeah. Yeah, we or can. or Catan. Cool. I don't know if you guys know this game. Oh, Catan. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm a beast in that game. I'm a beast now. Oh yeah. I can't lose. I think you're pretty competitive in a lot of areas, right? <laughs> a, lot, a, bit, a bit too much. <laughs> um, what is your lucky number? Six. Okay, nice. Uh, and then these are my last two out of five questions for you. Uh, what are three words to define you? Three words to find you? To define to you. To define you, yeah. Three words. Damn. I never asked myself those questions. Uh, I don't know the word in, in English. Uh, how I say charismatic. Yeah. Yeah. Char- charismatic. charismatic. Yeah. Yeah, charismatic. Mm-hmm. Uh, funny. Okay. Uh, like I said, the hard work, if I you find a word for that one. Yes. Hard okay. work. Yes. Hard work. Okay. That's it, bro. Nice. Okay, nice. And then this is my last rapid fire question for you. And we kind of t- talked about it earlier, but what are your goals for the future? Goals for the future? I really want to live of soccer, you know, as this, as, as a job for the rest of my life, my football life, so until 40, I, I don't know how I'm going to reach it, but the, the longest possible, I want to have, you know, kids, wife, and, and you know, all these things. So I want to have a family and live about football, travel around the world, have fun, and see my, my parents happy and uh, my, my family happy. And yeah, those are good goals. Um, I'm sure you can achieve all of them, but yeah, that is the end of the interview. Um, and also good job on passing the rapid fire 
test. A lot of people say that that's the hardest part of the interview. Um, but yeah, you complete the whole interview. So thank you so much for coming on. I really enjoyed talking with you and getting to know more about your story. Thank you very much to you guys for having me. It was a pleasure to talk to you and see you in Halifax. Huh? <laughs> yeah, and yeah. I'll definitely, yeah, we'll definitely, uh, if you don't know Chris No, um, a very, very fun player to watch. Um, so yeah, we'll be looking forward to seeing your games yes. this year. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. See you guys. Eh? Yeah. Thanks, Chris No. Thanks, Chris No. Au revoir. Thanks, you guys. Ha, salut. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. Ciao.